minutes. Only comment I make it tongue in cheek, Joe, is at some point in those notes I was referenced as Mr. Nation. I'm guessing it's oh. was... <laughs> spell check was likely responsible, but I'm not terribly concerned about correcting it. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll Captain find America. It. Yeah. Like, like Captain America, you're Mr. Nation. <laughs> I might start going by it. I kind of like it, but uh, right. other than that, I'm I'm okay with them. Uh, any other comments, Mike Dale? No. Nope. Make a motion to uh, accept the minutes as with noted correction. I will second that. Okay. Any new business? I don't see any on the agenda. Okay. Old business, so we do want to revisit the, the condi conditional use application um, from Mr. Carousella. Just as a reminder to the to the planning commission, I think we tabled this last time specifically. Well, two things, right? We were there was no way, even if we moved it forward to council at the mm -hmm. time, that we were going to make it in time for the February council meeting, considering the public uh, hearing requirement. And second to that, Justine had a, a particular request; she wanted to dig into it a little bit look at some of the uh, ATF regulations, I believe, <clears throat> and then look into a couple of other similar businesses just to get a feel and a comfort level for it. Um, in Justine's absence, I, I think, you know, we asked a number of questions last week, last month, sorry. Any additional questions from the Planning Commission that we need to get into this evening, noting uh, Mr. Carousella? I don't have any questions. I've got... Um, three conditions I would propose. Yeah, please do. Um, the first one, um, condition one, prior to occupancy, occupancy permit being issued, the Bridgeville Fire Department is permitted access to the building for the development of a structure pre-plan. Pre um, and I, as a discussion point here, I don't know if we want to add on to that, um, that the fire department have additional access in the future, you know, either annually or periodically um, to, to correct or follow up on that pre-plan. Pre-plan, Dale, from the perspective of, you know, it was called out on last conversation that they didn't have uh, fire retardant in the ceiling. Is that, is that what you're concerned about? Just no, it, it allows the fire department to go in and, and I let basically do a floor plan of the business. So they know if, if the fire, if there's a fire in the building, they know where the safe is. They know where his workbench is. They know how to access that area. And uh, I got you. They, they have that, you know, they provide that the, the fire department, Fire department takes and puts that information in each one of the trucks. So in the event of a fire, you know, the guys have an idea of what they're walking into before they even get into the building. And, and yeah, no surprises. Uh, yeah. And it's, and it's all about protecting them and, and protecting the business. Sure. I, I like the idea. I guess I'll ask the solicitor, like, are, are we, are we setting ourselves up for having conditions for this business that other conditions haven't been held to, or is it within our right to make that sort of recommendation? And I, I don't want to assume on behalf of He's Mr. Carousella, yeah. but he seemed very agreeable to these sorts of things. I don't think it's a problem, but can we make kind of arbitrary considerations like that? If I might chime in, um, Tom, it's not unreasonable. It's actually expected. And actually, okay. when you have a conditional use like this, it's appropriate. And in fact, working with the applicant, um, it's interactive. And the sorts of things he suggested that he can do, yep. you can kind of phrase those back as conditions. And in this case, were there things that actually make it approvable, so to speak? For instance, he's described the quantity, the magnitude being low of this, because at another magnitude, it might not be appropriate for this setting, but here it is. So like if he says, I'm not gonna have more than X at a time or a product to produce X at a time, and therefore that's why it's not mm -hmm. hazardous, et cetera, then you can actually include approved provided that, you know, one, no more than X, you know, et cetera. And along the lines of what uh, Dale was saying, certainly appropriate to include the conditions he's talking about, the floor plan, that pre-planning uh, to have an annual kind of update. And in fact, in the uh, criteria, <laughs> there's the thing that talks about the inventory. Yep. That would be kind of the first step, part of that pre-process I think Dale's talking about. Here's our inventory and maybe you do it, you know, whatever, once a year, 
provide updated inventory, allow for an inspection, et cetera. Okay. So that's all very appropriate, Tim. Okay, excellent. And would the sorry, fire department sorry, be I'm any... late, <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, sorry, I'm late, everybody. I couldn't find the computer here. It turns, it turns out my wife took it to her dance class tonight. So uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to call in. So my apologies about that. I'm presuming this is Mr. Carousella. Yes. Hey, thanks for joining us. We were just revisiting the topic. Uh, some discussion here about some some conditions that we'd like to apply to the permit. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. get to D Dale's got a couple of considerations. We just covered number one to bring you up to speed real quick. Anton Antonio, um, we're suggesting a, a pre plan uh, with the fire department just to give them a walkthrough of the facility and mm -hmm. be aware of what's on site, what's on premises, in the event that they ever have an emergency call. There, you know, going in with eyes wide open of, you know, what's in the, the facility and where those things are located, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's no problem at all. Okay. Um, Dale, number two. Do we, well, before I, before I go on to number two, do yeah. we want to put, add to that, that periodically or annually that um, they're permitted to do that again or um, to, to update their pre-plan annually or, or periodically? I don't know, maybe Tom can, um, yeah, I think you can say annually or otherwise upon request. So that inventory yeah. calls for kind of, a, it has upon request language. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Um, condition number two um, was at the request of the fire chief um, that the building be placarded in accordance, in, in accordance with current state fire code and or National Fire Protection Association, NFPA recommendations um, following NFPA uh, 704 document. Okay. Can you give a little more, more detail there, Dale? Um, the National Fire Protection Association is a, is a um, body that makes recommendations um, regarding fire code and building code. Um, and a lot of the uh, state fire codes. I don't know about Minnesota, uh, but about Pennsylvania. I haven't seen theirs. I presume that they've just adopted the international fire code from some date, 2015, 2018, whatever the current fire code is. But NFPA is a, a body that that makes recommendations and basically is is following um, trying to provide safety for the firefighters, safety for the general public, um, mm -hmm. and this placarding. Um, you see them on a lot of a lot of industrial buildings. Um, it, the, the, there's a what they call a diamond, NFPA diamond, um, and once one co one corner of that is is blue, another corner is red, another corner is yellow, and it all has to do with either um, health hazard, flammability, reactivity, um, and the fourth uh, fourth diamond is white, which is for specific hazards. So it's just giving a heads up to emergency personnel what's what's in the building. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. And you, know, <clears throat> you, can, you can talk with the fire chief. He'll he can hook you up with, with um, what you need. I mean, you can Google NFPA um, 704 um, and it kind of lays stuff out. It's, it's a pretty extensive document because it goes into all kinds of different hazard classes and, and that type of thing. Um, you know, where there's the possibility for, you know, um, explosion, um, <laughs> if there was a fire or something, um, mm -hmm. you know, mutual aid, different fire departments may not have that pre-plan, but if they roll up, they've at least, you know, can see from the outside that, you know, there's an issue inside someplace. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I can go over all the details with him. <clears throat> he can, you know, kind of hook me up with all the... Yeah, and, and, literature and everything that I need. That's fine. Yeah, and I, I think these conditions I think are, are pretty um, straightforward. They're not meant to mm -hmm. try and you know dissuade you or, or impede your business, but it's just a matter no. of you know, making things better for you and the community. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. It's not you know unreasonable by any means. I want everybody to be safe. You know, don't want to do anything hazardous or wrong. So that's it's perfectly fine with me. Okay. Uh, Dale, Dale, right. this is Joe. Uh, yep. Just for a point of reference, there's a local example of this placard up in Great Southern Shopping Center, the Firestone Tire Shop next to Wendy's. Yeah. 
It, it's placard. It, You'll see this placard on that uh, side of that building. So, uh, so you know exactly what he's talking about. There's a local example. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, and and the signs, the signs, you can get them from Safety Sign Uline.com. There's a number of places mm. that you can get them, um, but you, okay. you just need to make sure that um, the, the specific hazard um, is for what you've got is identified on that sign. Okay. Um, and it's and the signs aren't the the placards aren't that expensive. That's yeah, that's fine. Um, and the third condition is approval of conditional use permit is provided that the owner meets all criteria of the ordinance and meets all federal, state, local, and other regulations. Okay. So th th yeah. those are my those are my three proposed. Okay. Um, Mike, Tim, you guys got anything? I think that's you know. Those are pretty common sense things, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yeah, I'm great with that, Dale. I appreciate the thought you put into it. I, I feel like we're not setting the bar so high as to be prohibitive to somebody who wants to expand their business in the borough, but it, it makes good sense. I think it's uh, point safety considerations for both the business as well as the community. So I'm, I'm great with that. Okay. Does he have, uh, Anthony, do you have any, any sense of, of quantities? <clears throat> Um, not really. It, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I, you know, I mean, we've been so busy with the powder coating shop. I haven't really had a chance to <laughs> do too much of the, the ammunition here lately. Um, but I mean, I could see me doing a couple thousand rounds a week, which I know it sounds like a lot, but in all reality, it's not. Um, I, but other than that, I'm not quite sure. Okay. I mean, is, is, um, ATF going to put some sort of, of cap on how much how much you can um, how much powder you can have or use? It yeah, they'll yeah there'll be a cap on it. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I I have to actually withdraw my application because it was taking too long, and I have to resubmit it again um, once you know this was all approved and everything. And then we, you know, sit down and meet and go over all the regulations and how much I'm allowed to have on site. But as I, you know, stated before, I'm I have no intentions of having any more than a, you know, a few containers of of powder, and they are only a few pounds each, up to eight pounds each, I think. So, I, I would be well below whatever their um, limits are, because okay. I know there are certain limits. Once you start getting, you know, huge amounts, which is nowhere even in the realm of what I'm doing now, you have to have you know, underground bunkers or whatever it may be, you know, so it's completely safe. But um, for my area, yeah, it's, I'm not going to be anywhere near it, what their limits are. Okay. That's all I got, Tim. Okay. So with those conditions considered, I take a motion to move this forward to council for consideration. Uh, I'll, make it, I'll make a motion. Okay, Dale, you second? Yes. Excellent. All in favor, that'd be the three of us. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any dissent? Okay. Antonio, thanks for your patience with us. I think this was kind of a new one for at least this regime of the Planning Commission. So just wanted to do right by everybody involved. Thanks for, for being on two months consecutively and answering questions. I look forward to working with you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Again, sorry I was late tonight. I couldn't find the computer and didn't realize my wife took it with her. <laughs> so no, no problem. No kind problem. of Appreciate threw me for, uh, for a loop. <laughs> no problem. Okay, you're welcome to stay on for the balance of the call or if you need to drop now, no problem either. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, Joe, hey, Joe just right. so you know, it's Tom. You've probably talked to, to Joe Collar and uh, you just need to do the drill, so to speak, one more time. I think you have your uh, public hearing uh, scheduled for the upcoming meeting. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, that's for the 8th. Okay. And then you'll have the PC's recommendation that we'll place into the record as well at that time. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Old business number two, the comprehensive plan update. I saw the package that came out to all the planning commission with the six RFP responses. Um, let's spend a couple of minutes at least. And Joe, I know you've gone through this a couple of times, but now that we have materials in hand, um, 
open to, to comment across the planning commission. I did spend a little bit of time with each of the six of them. I guess I was looking for uh, a little bit of the process moving forward. Um, you know, in, in previous experiences in the business world, we, you know, take all those respondents and shortlist them to the top, you know, top two or three. What are the approaches the borough typically takes, or is it all six and we need to figure out a way of who we're, you know, wanting to entertain for next rounds? No, I, I think you're, you're spot on. Uh, I think the best way to go about it right now is the RFPs or the proposals have been passed out to members of planning commission and members of council. Uh, I think the best thing right now is for everyone to review them. Uh, Council's yet to meet to talk about it. It may be best that we form like a committee of, yeah. of both members of both boards. So we decide, you know, who wants to be at the table to move ahead with shortlisting like you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's best right now that everyone reviews and makes their notes. Everyone makes their own opinion on who you think you rank them. Then when we can get together within the next month between the two boards and come to an agreement on who we want to shortlist an interview. Okay. Well, that's going on. I'm working on a grant application that I'm applying to the state to help fund the project uh, that may delay the project for a couple months, but at the end of the day, it would pay for half of it. Okay. So uh, that's really where we're at right now. Uh, I just passed these out within the past week. So I, I have yet to get any feedback yet from members of council. So if you can give us some time on that, we can get some guidance to you by our next meeting on how we want to go this, but you're, you're spot on. Uh, there's no need to interview all six of these. At least that's my recommendation. Yeah. Uh, some of them are already, when I read them myself, some jump out as shining stars and others. Uh, I don't think their plan or their approach would be a good fit here. So mm -hmm. it'd be nice to have that discussion and, and maybe it's best everyone make, takes, uh, take some notes when they're reading and uh, we could have a good uh, little get together with that. Okay. So we don't get too far out ahead of you. Do you do you need interest from this group tonight of people willing to participate? Do you want to solicit that other other methods? Get with council first. What's the recommendation there? Uh, I, I don't have that yet. Uh, okay. Let me talk to borough council and uh, I'll I'll let you know. Okay. I, I think with, with five members on planning commission, uh, whoever wants to be part of that process, I, I can't see it being negative. Sure. It isn't like it's that big. Okay. Hey, Joe. Yes, Dale. Um, quick question. Um, estimated cost of the project is fifty thousand or seventy-five thousand. That, that's convoluted. Uh, yeah. yeah. We really don't have a definitive budget. Uh, I know for this year we did budget twenty-five thousand dollars towards the plan. Uh, next year uh, the budget isn't set yet. Now it's foreseen that. Typically, once something's in there, I think we can sustain it. Uh, but uh, in all reality, when you look at the plan, the RFPs, the proposals that we got back, a good number has been seventy-five thousand for a quality plan. If, at least, if you look at the proposals, it's rather been it's rather been fifty or seventy-five. Yeah. And in all reality, if we didn't get grant money, I, I think we can afford the fifty because that's within our budget. You know, and I, I hate to speak for the future, but uh, it, I'm just hypothetical for next year. Uh, we could do that. Uh, 75, uh, we, we need the grant support. Yeah, I was just curious. It seemed like uh, in one of them, there was a, a comment or something about um, 75 being the being budgeted for the project. And I, I... No, yeah, I, I think that's just a discussion if with grant money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Mike, any thoughts, questions, comments on no, the next I, topic? I, you know, I got a chance to look them over and kind of like what Joe said, you know, there's some that jump out and, you know, we have some relationship. We've had some dealings with some of them already mm. that, you, that you're well aware of. So it's just a matter of going through, I think, uh, figuring out, you know, which ones we really want to kind of bring to the top and interview. Yeah. Okay. You know, not right. Not today. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I took the took the RFP and just kind of used that to create a spreadsheet for, um, you know, what how much how if all the boxes get ticked as far as you know what we said that we were looking for and and um, the criteria for being chosen and um, started going through that way and just kind of kind of a methodical process. 
Yeah, that's a good point. And, and Joe, again, maybe just, you know, historical perspective of how we typically do these things. Will there be a standard, you know, when we get down to making up numbers, final three, will there be a standard way that we evaluate these things so that it's, you know, eyes wide open to everybody? Of oh, I think that could be something that could either be twofold. One, we can ask the state come in to give us some guidance or two, when we select the joint committee that's going to move ahead with this, we come up with that at that day one. Yeah, okay. And uh, I, I have notes on all the RFPs. Uh, I'll type them up so that it's easy to read and follow, and I'll share them with everyone. So at least you can see where I was thinking when I reviewed them. Yeah, that'd be Maybe great. That'd be yep. yep. So the okay. request right now is to take a close look at them, compile thoughts, and you know wait for this joint committee between commission and the planning commission and the council to take formal next steps. Exactly. We, we only got the proposals back this month, so it's okay. still very fresh. Okay. All right. Excellent. That's all we've got on the agenda for old business. Anything else from planning commission that you want to mention this evening? I don't know if we want to go back in and, and revisit some of the, some of the issues that we tabled um, earlier, you know, mid last year, well, after we'd picked up the, the, the three or four that we, decided to move on at some point in time. Yeah, I think we do, Dale. It's a good point. When I look at the agenda this evening, I mean, it's fairly thin, right? And we've all talked about being a little bit more aggressive with things we plan. I think I'm, I'm guessing we collectively want to do that mindful of Justine leading the planning commission at this point. I think at a minimum following this meeting this evening, we can put a request to her to say, as we think about March and we'll have RFP and comprehensive plan things to get to. But uh, we should probably have a standing agenda item to revisit what are we doing in the meantime, right? I think we're, we're all a comprehensive plan is a good place to start, but I don't think it needs to be the end all be all for what we do this year. So um, definitely want to do that with the, the chair's input. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. Okay. Uh, we should also know next month on our uh, act of Allegheny, uh, pedestrian plan that the grant money we sought for that. So we should know hopefully by next meeting where that is. So that, that may be an active uh, project that gets initiated uh, through the commission here within the next month or so. Great. Uh, it's looking favorable. Excellent. Good to hear. Good job, Joe. Yeah. Don't, we're not there yet. <laughs> well, you know, you, you made the effort to, to, you know, go for the grant and, and write the proposal. I mean, you know, that's, that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll know next month. Okay. Okay. Last call for anything else for tonight's discussion. If not, I'd take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All in dissent. Speak now. <laughs> okay. We're adjourned. Right. Thank you guys for the time. I appreciate it.